Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. My name is Bliss Foster. One of the number one questions that I get asked is, is fashion school worth it? A lot of you are aspiring fashion designers, a lot of people that want to get into the industry and they look at the prices for fashion school and say like, okay, so this is clearly a very big life commitment. It's a big time commitment, money commitment. And everyone usually asks the question, is this actually worth it? Is this something that I need in order to reach the goal of doing what I want to do? fashion design. I should say before we get into the meat of this video that ultimately the answer to that question is dependent on you and your circumstances and your goals. There is ultimately no one who can say, yes, that is worth it or no, it is not other than you. But I had the recent opportunity to go to Antwerp, Belgium, where the Royal Academy of Fine Arts is. It's one of the most respected fashion schools in the world. I got to interview the chair of their fashion department, Walter van Bierendonk, who is also an incredible fashion designer in his own right, as well as a few students that are in their master's program for fashion. Hopefully what we're gonna do here is give you some insights into the way that fashion school actually works. It can be kind of difficult to know what something is like until you've actually gone and done it yourself. So the goal here here is to get from both the chair of the fashion department's perspective and also the perspective of the students that are there to kind of get an idea of what it is like at fashion school. As a little treat for sticking through the entire video, I also asked Walter Van Bierendonk what Demna Vasalia was like as a fashion student because Walter is one of his teachers. Watch the whole video, you get a cool treat at the end. If you love fashion as an art form and you want to learn about it on a deeper level, don't forget to subscribe. We do in-depth analyses of runway shows as well as talking about fashion in a more philosophical way. And if you love the channel, you should support it on Patreon. Content like this can only exist if people are supporting it in a very literal financial way. My Patreon starts at just three bucks a month. Let's get into it. Let's start with the master's students. These two young women are exceptionally talented and I was delighted to get to interview them about their time at school and specifically about the work that they're producing while in the program. Hello, my name is Dominika Grzybek and I'm from Poland. What are the benefits that you feel like you're getting from studying fashion in a formal way on a master's level? From the moment I enter the buildings, when I start um, studying here, it's like the constant process of, of you know, growing. So it, it's hard to say what mm -hmm. exactly the benefits I, I, I'm, I'm getting. I'm, I'm right now in a very deep um, process of making things and thinking and and like I, I have like kind of like a mirror in front of me and I'm all the time looking into myself like what's happening inside of me mm -hmm. and school helps me gives me ask me the questions and then I'm searching like deeper in myself very cool what what made you want to study in Antwerp specifically um, it was my dream yeah Jesus, it's so it's so cheesy but yeah it, it was my my dream and it was a dream I remember the moment because um, I went to London to see the exhibition of Martin Margiela. It mm -hmm. was, I think, in Somerset House, 2010-ish. I'm very jealous. It, I, I didn't want to leave. Yeah. And, and, and I didn't know anything about fashion at that time. So when I entered and I saw, like, I was walking from room to another room, like, I started to first cry because I didn't understand what's happening because mm -hmm. suddenly clothes get emotions mm -hmm. and like influence like whatever I felt. And so I understood that it's not just a garment yeah. and it's a story and yeah. it's uh, something personal and moves me in, you know, in many different levels. Mm -hmm. So, and then I went deeper, like to see what's happening, who's this guy? Mm -hmm. And then I discovered a few other people. And then I saw that one school is responsible for this mm -hmm. and some of these people are teaching here. So with your own work, tell me about your work in as much detail as, as you can. The topic for the BA collection, um, it's quite very personal. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's, it, I, was, I was reading the book um, about how we uh, pass trauma through generations mm -hmm. and how it somehow um, got to our DNA. Mm -hmm. And this is, uh, for me, like an um, opening story of, of the story of women in my family. Mm -hmm. So I start to search, like, what, 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 what's going on with the women in my family? Because I know that something is off. Like, mm -hmm. so I look to my grandmother, grand grandmother, and my great great grandmother, and then I saw like there is a huge suffering behind it with the women. And I knew that I'm, I'm having, I'm, I'm also wearing this heaviness of, of this memories of this, I don't know, weird, uh, unshaped, uh, I don't know, feelings. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and then uh, something happened in Poland uh, politically, and they took one of the <coughs> uh, women rights uh, again, mm -hmm. and they start uh, start protests. And I, I I noticed that this is the story that how how the women in my family were suffering for so so such mm -hmm. a long time. And then I was looking on the pictures how women are on the streets and protesting, and how how the power is coming from, and and the movement uh, because it's certain movement suddenly because you have this you feel like when you are together with so many people so many women who want the same thing you have this like um, community energy mm -hmm. so I was looking for these movements and I was thinking what how I feel how I'm acting right now in this situation and there were cer certain movements which I really liked and I, I remember I was I was crying <laughs> I cry a lot apparently me too <laughs> that's okay <laughs> Sorry. but I, I was crying and I was holding my skirt and biting it mm -hmm. and I look at myself and I was like holding and I felt like a small girl who are biting the skirt pulling up and doesn't give a you know anything about mm -hmm. you can swear it's fine ah okay, yeah. okay that's good. Um, so I, I like this movement I, I love the the way that the flowers the women start to <coughs> set a fire uh, with the colorful cloud flowers on the streets mm -hmm. and there was one image on the protest uh, where women were naked and covered with this colorful smoke around their body and they were starting to disappear mm -hmm. and, and this disappearing of the stories of women which in 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 the history is like well known mm -hmm. this was for me like a very beautiful way to to show the garments to show the silhouette to show myself that we are covered somehow so that's why i came up with the idea of manipulation the fabric which i used layers and layers and layers of tulle <coughs> like i did like some kind of degradé um to to that the shape kind of is disappearing, the print which is inside mm -hmm. is also disappearing, and I and I focus on the parts of the body which for me was the most important, uh, so that's why I, I could I could cover them with smoke and, and focus on the on the bright colors what I. My name is Awesa Awesa Anna Zegnieta, and I'm from Latvia. What what are the benefits that you feel like you're getting from studying fashion on a higher academic level? There's better guidance, guidance mm. from the teacher, teachers, professionals. We get, um, yeah, they just um, kind of push us to dig more mm -hmm. into ourselves, our own uh, work, or what do we want to express. They make us question more. Mm. Uh, yeah, I just think it pushes you mm. more in your work. It's better for your own kind of work development. Very cool. Why did you choose to study here specifically at the Royal Academy? It was kind of goes quite far back. Mm -hmm. When I was younger, I always knew that I wanted to study fashion. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I came across Antwerp, I believe it was 2013. And my mom and I went on a trip to Paris. There was art mm -hmm. exhibition yeah. Oh, yeah. about yeah. monsters and yeah. monster clothing. Yeah. And there, there were a lot of pieces from Antwerp. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing that, like, wow, that's also fashion? Mm -hmm. What? It can be that? I remember it blew my mind. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, these pieces, there was like a blown up skull piece. And yeah, I was just like mesmerized. I was like, oh my God, okay, Antwerp. I need to check what's up with Antwerp. From that on, I understood I want to study here. Can you summarize your work for me? Like, tell me about just, I mean, as, as much detail as you want to give. What What is your work? Uh, well, with my work, I try to just look at it as a play. I play around. Mm -hmm. First, I build a story. I, I work from, like, kind of, like, fairy tales and storytelling. First, mm -hmm. I do illustrations, drawings, and from that on, it just kind of involves. Mm -hmm. For me, it's like a big like playing around just like a play yeah to not take it so seriously then it's also easier because it's yeah yeah do you just feel like, like you've time. come into a like a formalized process with that play or is it always very open-ended it's very open-ended yeah okay. I never know what's gonna come up I'm just like building a story yeah for this character so for your for your specific pieces it seems kind of like your work is built to be in an ensemble together like that all the pieces work together do you did you design them to be a sing like multiple looks or do you, were you designing each of the pieces individually and then they just fit together very seamlessly uh it was actually kind of individually mm -hmm. like with every look somehow a, a different there's like a different story connected but in the end i feel like it all comes together because i used maybe the same technique like for this 
yeah, the collection I used, um, like, repetition. When I was a kid, I would mm-hmm. do a lot of, like, paper cutouts when mm-hmm. you do, like, snowflakes, when you open it up, oh, yeah. and they're, like... And then also this, when you fold the paper, you cut out a um, human figure, and then you open it, there's, like, a string of, like, human figures. Mm-hmm. So I just use it for patterns. Mm-hmm. By far, my favorite piece that you have is this, like, green snake like wrap around the neck and the sleeve and stuff. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about that piece? Uh, That piece came from, because I was measuring my imaginary friend being Mm -hmm. by the lake, being like um, starting to get friends with all the animals around the lake, Mm -hmm. with the bunnies and the lizards, and then with the snake. So I went deeper into, what if she had a fight with the snake and her Mm -hmm. hand going in the mouth and then she's taken over by the snake. Mm-hmm. I have a couple of drawings, illustrations, how it came about actually this piece. Mm-hmm. And I was just like drawing her fight with a snake and then she's just taken over by it. Mm. Like she's somehow has won, but at the same time she's still kind of suffocating. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So That's crazy. Kinda came out. Do you have a, a head that you brought with you? Uh, yeah. That's so cool. What is uh, it? That's uh, should I take it? Sure, yeah, yeah. grab it, yeah. It was quite um, important for me in this collection. I didn't want to see the model's face. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to, to all be like in a blur. People in your life kind of like disappearing. You don't remember the faces. It mm-hmm. becomes all blur. And then I looked at my drawings and it's also kind of like in a blur. So I thought it's quite important to um, yeah, blur the model's face with my own uh, mask. Oh, so this goes this over... actually goes... It's a mask. Over a face. Over a face with the ears. Because I just love ears. So, it, yeah, it doesn't fully obscure their face because it, it is translucent. Yeah, yeah. But it does kind of obscure it in it. That's so cool. So it still blurs. Yeah. I saw pictures of that on your Instagram, mm. and I couldn't figure out what I was looking at, <laughs> which is my favorite thing to happen when I'm looking at a photograph, is I sit there for 20 seconds looking at being like, I don't understand what's happening here. Like, that is the best feeling in the world. Yeah, in your memory, it's kind of like a blur. Yeah. So I wanted to have this kind of a yeah. blur. Like, you don't... Yeah. That's so totally. cool. Lastly, we're gonna show a couple clips from the very lengthy talk that I had with Walter Van Bierendonk, who's the chair of the fashion department at the Royal Academy of Fine Arts in Belgium. If you wanna check out the entire interview with Walter Van Bierendonk, you should join the Patreon. He revealed a lot about his process, about his framework for looking at color and a lot of other things that would be really helpful if you yourself are trying to become a designer. Ladies and gentlemen, Walter. Your students love it. I was talking to two of your master's students this morning and they, I mean, they just, or like, oh, Walter, it's just been great. Yeah. <laughs> they, they love it. They said you ask really, um, they said he asks perfect questions that makes you reconsider things in the right way. They said yeah. the questions yeah. are always good. Yeah. No, no, I think you have to question yourself, and that's also a little bit the way we're working. Are we working uh, with the whole team, in fact, on a very direct and personal way? Mm-hmm. Are we talking? Uh, every week twice with with all the students we're following them very close mm-hmm. and even the whole team is following all the students so it's uh, um, it was of course much more difficult with the previous years with the, the, the pandemic mm-hmm. but uh, normally we are also sitting together when we are doing final juries and and I following in fact the students from the first year till the last mm. and that is every teacher is aware of what is happening with the students during oh, wow. his uh, study so it's very hands on between the teachers and yes, the students yes yeah, yeah yeah and also we see the the evolutions we see the the, the problems what what is happening what is not happening mm-hmm. how we have to push them where we have to and uh, just to give you an example we I started now the school year with uh, I ask them to do a diary during their holidays, so mm-hmm. they, they do like literally a diary, what mm. they did. And we, we spent like uh, talking about the diary, one hour, one and a half. They just explained me everything, what they did, what they were interested in, what they were going to see, and, and to get to know them better. So that's really like the starting point. Mm. And then we start to work together and we're building up really a kind of relation almost. Very good, very good. and. Um, What's been a consistently challenging part of teaching? Maybe at the beginning or maybe all through your career? Yeah, the, the, I mean, it's uh, very challenging because you, you, you work with the students. Mm-hmm. You have to uh, motivate them. You have to tell them sometimes that things are not good, but at the same time, you have to push them also to mm-hmm. do things. And, uh, and you, you have to 
get a little bit in their heads and mm -hmm. from their own identity you have to guide them mm -hmm. and and it's not the idea that i'm guiding them through my own personal uh, taste or design ideas no i guide them through their own mm -hmm. signature and that's so you literally are stepping into a person and you help them mm -hmm. to take decisions so it's a very intense and very demanding process mm -hmm. and um, and like now i have 30 students which is a little bit ridiculous mm -hmm. But uh, ridiculously small or ridiculously big? Oh, no, huge. Okay. Yeah. No, no, we are, it's, we are a little bit in an overfull mm. department. And, and, um, and I mean, like that, it's much more difficult to get to know the students very well. Mm. But, um, but the challenge is really to, to push them forward um, in their own world, in their own signature, and not mm. to, to, um, to tell them things to do what they're not what they don't feel hmm. that's the challenge and i i would i would get in trouble if i didn't ask you about this and since we're on the topic of students i had about 55 people ask me to be like ask him how demna was as a student oh. and so i'm i'm supposed to ask you how demna was as a student yeah i mean the, the immediately after graduating i took him with me f to a company scapa here in belgium uh -huh. that was his first job oh, wow. so i really believed in him yeah and, uh, and i think what he already did at school was very um, interesting and promising and, mm -hmm. and really he was very strong in constructing garments and, mm -hmm. and uh, he was doing men's uh, at that time uh, mainly men's collections and um, no no I think that he, he was very promising and very mm -hmm. hands-on and, and uh, even the class that he was in was a very dynamic class they made their own magazine they they, oh, wow. they did shoots with uh, even the teachers involved and, and uh, mm -hmm. Uh, they did the cover was like uh, <laughs> <laughs> with a small I don't know how you call the two yeah the bird no, no, oh, no the no. nail polish no 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 to to if you sew you use it as a cover a vigor you yeah you know when you sew that you don't you can use a oh a thimble Yes, a thimble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. So it was the cover was like that with a thimble, thimble <laughs> with from Antwerp, like a souvenir. I love that. Yeah, yeah. so it was really That's very. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Huh. No, no, no. He was uh, very promising. And, yeah, and um, no, no. And I followed him. Also, I went to see the the couture show now yeah, in Paris. Yeah, I saw you in the video. Very nice. Yeah, it was yeah, beautiful. Yeah. He really yeah, yeah, yeah. he brought it back finally. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's very good. Yeah, but I think he's doing good things. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's good that things like that are, fas are happening in fashion. Yeah, because it's good um, conversations. A lot yeah, of really yeah, good yeah, conversations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good energy also. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to join up on the Patreon and subscribe. We cover tons of stuff about fashion. Usually I'm doing in-depth runway show analyses and we're talking about clothes in a more theoretical and philosophical way. If that's the kind of thing that you're into, you should subscribe.